everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So this is project number six and the last tutorial for this year's Mother's Day series. I've really loved the ones that I've shared this year and this is, I think, just so pretty and a perfect one to finish off the series. So this is kind of evolved from the Toffee box wrap that I done. I was looking at some chocolates in the shop and I thought what a nice way to be able to dress up the packaging. So I've put together this. So if I just bring it up a bit closer, you can see that beautiful topper and the Happy Mother's Day there, which is done with silver embossing powder. And then you just lift up these and inside you have a really nice tray of chocolates. These are lovely chocolates. They're Marks and Spencer's chocolates. And um, I've had these before. They're not very expensive, so it's a perfect way again to just give a nice little, you know, token gift, but make it look really, really special. I think it's beautiful. I've used, well, I've actually made the flowers from scratch. It's all using the flower forming foam, and I will show you how to use that. And I just think it gives such a beautiful effect. And I've thoroughly enjoyed making this. It's been really, really fun to do. And that's what it's all about. So let's just get straight into the tutorial because I talk away and hopefully you'll pick up lots of tips along the way and enjoy the video. Okay, so this is how the chocolates look when you buy them, which is nice enough, but you know, we want to make it look even more special. So they're a really, I think, really good value for money and they taste delicious and I have bought these quite a few times. So what I'm going to do for the moment is just take this out carefully, pop that to one side, because all I want to use is the base. So whatever, let's just take those crumbs away. <laughs> so whatever it is that you're using, you want to, you can either take it apart um, this one here you can just pop out and you can line up the score lines like I done with the chocolate wrap, okay? So you can just deconstruct your cardstock, which is probably going to be the easiest way to do this one. Um, it's reinforced. I'm not going to take out the reinforced pieces because this one won't be. I'm going to be adding some mats and layers which will strengthen it and once we add the side double flaps then that's going to you know work perfectly so I'm just going to bring it up to this score line here which is the actual side this is just all reinforcement so if I lay that down in the cardstock here it's coming in at bang on 11 inches so it should be 11 oh no it's actually so it's not an exact square so this is going to I'm going to cut this to 11 by 10 and 5 eighths. Okay, so now you can see the score line here all lines up perfectly. So I can see that these are one inch. And actually when I lay my ruler down, they're bang on one inch. And I think all of them, they should be, yeah. So everything is one inch. So it's really easy now to just grab that piece of card and just score at one, each, one inch on all four sides. Okay, and then we just need to do a little bit of cutting and fold and burnish these score lines. What I've just done there is I've just cut on one side, just cut down the two score lines to the first score line, and then you just flip it and do the same there. And then if you just take a little wedge off of each side of your tab, it will just tidy it up and make sure we've got nothing overhanging. Okay, and then I'm just going to grab my glue and I'm just going to add some glue onto the top of the tab. And just like any other box, just bring it under and bring up one of the sides and it should line up perfectly. And then Go around to the next one, glue on the top, pop it under and bring up that side. And just repeat that on the other side of the box. So that's the tray done and now the chocolates fit in there perfectly. We're going to reinforce all this, we're going to put mats and layers on, it's all going to look really nice but you can see straight away just how easy it is to start to transform these chocolates which can I say smell amazing as well. I am really really trying here not to eat any of these so right let's move on to the lid. 
Okay, so I've done one half of the flip lid and I've also just got this piece here, which is gonna line the inside. I just thought it looked quite nice. So I've cut this one down to eight and three eighths by eight and three quarters. I don't think I gave the final measurement of this one. So once it's all together, it's nine by eight and five eighths, okay? And I'm gonna, like, we're gonna, you know, put some cardstock on the sides there with the cloud glue because that will just strengthen it more. Okay, so to make one of these, okay, really, really easy to do. And I love this paper I'm using actually. Let me show you the paper pad. This one here, I've shared it before. Flowers blooming, and I picked it up at the works, and it was three pound. It's absolutely stunning. I've made some really nice gift bags with this one as well. So you want to score. You want two pieces of cardstock that are seven and five eighths of an inch. Let's move that out of the way. I've got so much stuff on my desk at the moment. Okay, so seven and five eighths of an inch by 10 and three quarters. And you want to score at one inch on three, well, all four sides actually. So yeah, do one inch on all four sides. Okay. And then along one of the shorter sides, you would have just scored at one inch, but you also want to score at two. So just on one, because that piece there is going to stick under the box. That's going to be the side of the lid. Okay. And this is just going to reinforce the other end. So you'll see there just along one of the, you know, when you've got it in along the short side there, just on one side, score at one and two, but one inch on all four sides. Okay. So again, fold and burnish the score lines. Want to do a bit of cutting so first of all along the long side with just the one inch piece you've got the one you've got the other side there with the two one inch sections you want this one facing you and you're just going to remove the square in each corner so completely take it out and then flip it now so you're working on the other long side and what you want to do here is cut down past the first score line and down to the second. So you've got your two squares free there. Do that on the other side, okay. Then remove just the top square on each side, okay. So you'll be left with this and then you just wanna take a little wedge off of each side, like that. So we'll just lay that down there and see what you should have. And then I'm going to bring in my longer scissors, but what you want to do is from the outer side here, but from the, the, the corner here where the score line is, you're going to cut right across to here. So you're going to cut on the diagonal. So we're going to create that. Now if you would rather draw a pencil line from the corner, like I said, where that score line is. If you fold that under, you're working within that rectangle. But if you would rather do a pencil line like so, okay, and then follow that, then you can do. So I'm just going to cut from that corner. You want to be, you know, really neat with this because it is the side and it's all going to be seen like so. And then on this side here, I'm going to go from this corner here actually and cut down. Okay, so now we need to stick this together. So I'm going to, in fact, you might want to take on that long part here, is just take a little bit off of each end. And then you're going to add glue all along here. and just make sure that glue sticks down. And this just reinforces that bit a little bit. But by the time we add all this on, like I said, in here is my Kalau glue, so it will make it all nice and strong. And then you want to add glue to the top of both of these tabs. And then just bring it under and around there. And you should have this piece hanging down because that's what we're going to stick underneath the box. And now you'll see we've got that nice side detail. Okay, so now we've got the other ones. You want to do that twice, you will have two, and you're going to see how they're going to sit side by side. 
Next I've got these two pieces here to mat and layer. So I've got this white cardstock which is four and three eighths by um, eight and a half. And then I've got this lovely pattern paper which is from the same paper pad and this is four and one eighth of an inch by eight and a quarter. So I'm gonna stick the white down first and then that one on top. So I've just stuck that down there and then with the bottom of this, if you just again take a little bit off of each side, it will allow you to kind of conceal it underneath the base of the box without anything sticking out. So I'm just going to fold it out that way for a minute. And on the inside here on this tab, you just want to add your glue along the shorter side, okay, and you want to line up, so basically you stick that whole one inch piece underneath, close the lid, oh, get that lid closed down and then you'll be able to just push it against the base and when you lie it down, open it up and then you can push it down against your um, table. So you see it drops down really nicely and then do the same with this one. Now we have the closure to our box, so it should overlap one of them just ever so slightly. You can see there it all fits really well. So let's grab the chocolates, run in, they sit perfectly. Look at that, yay! I love it. Right now, I'm gonna just add some decorative card. I might just put white strips of cardstock on the sides actually, and then we need to do the topper. Okay, so the topper that I want to do, I'm going to use the flower forming foam. So this is the Crafter's Companion, and this is your your standard kind of fun foam is 2mm, but this here is 0.5mm, I believe it's very, very thin, you can see there, it's just, yeah, you'd almost think there's nothing to it, excuse if you can hear any, that's the, um, the rain that's currently pounding against my window. Anyway, so you can fold it in half, and then in half again, and I can actually get it to fit this panel on top perfectly. And this is the, this is the John Next Door, it's the Christmas rose, but I said when I got this before Christmas, you can use it for anything, and it creates this lovely, this lovely cluster of flowers here, and that's using cardstock, but I'm going to use the foam and uh, get some really nice effects. And then the ivy behind is the plate die here that I've got as well. So I've got my die machine here, and you can just cut through those four. You can probably cut through even more. It's, um, you know, because it is so fine, but it cuts through really well. Okay, so now you can pop it out and you have four of each, you know, shape that you've cut. I'm going to keep them in their piles so I know where I am, like so. And then these are the stamen detail, which I'm still going to keep the in white. I'm just going to colour them with my inks, which we'll do next. And they do all come away. They've all cut. It's just there's quite a few layers. So just kind of wiggle it around until they all kind of come out these and you layer them all up again I'll show you that in a moment let's do this one here okay if you want to cut it and keep these sections because obviously you can you know get some smaller petals and things cut from that but that's just how easy it is to cut through your die machine okay so next I want to get these all linked up so I'm going to use the this is the Harmony water reactive dyes. I won't be using any water, but it's pink tulips, a really nice colour. I'm just looking at my, I'm going to use my little blending brushes here, but I want to make sure that this colour's not going to run. Let's just make sure, because I think that's a bit of brown mixed in from the brush. Okay, so what you want to do is I'm going to grab one of the petals, because we're going to shape all these with some heat in a moment, so I want to get the colour down first. I'm not going to be too kind of, you know, careful pressures with it, I'm just going to start from the middle and just kind of flick out, because once these get shaped, you know, it's, um, 
it isn't going to matter really how you do this but you just want to kind of you know it don't matter if it's a little bit darker in areas I want it to be really dark in the center but you know on the actual petals there where I'm kind of brushing it out you know you want kind of variation because that will just you know make them look more real you can see there what I've done so I'm just going to do that on all of these petals. I probably won't use all the flowers on this one project, but if you do them all in one go, then you've got them there for something else later. Okay, so I have already gone and done these four here. And you can see just how well that ink gives them depth just by having the darker colour in the centres there. We've got to add the stamens, so I'm going to do these. I think I'm actually going to keep them white. I think it's going to look really nice. And you'll see here, why she got an iron? It's the quickest way to get the dimension. You don't have to stretch them and all that kind of stuff, which you can do. But this is my craft iron, so it's what I use for doing like my heat vinyl and um, yeah you can see it's pretty pretty bad but it's perfect for this kind of thing. So you want to have it, I mean everybody's iron's going to be different and you'll kind of be able to gauge the temperature that you need. I have mine actually quite hot, it's on a silk setting so it's, it's about halfway really. But what you're going to do, use some um, tweezers and be very very careful and you just want to sit it, I'm going to use my finger to pop it in place and just kind of like rub it around a little bit and you'll start to see it kind of lift. Can you see the, the shape there that it's naturally formed? And then I can just take that off. It's not hot, like you can touch it, it's not a problem. I'm using a flower shaping tool. This was actually one of the ones in the recent Papercraft Society kit. But now that is never going to go back to its flat form because it's been almost melted. But can you see all that nice dimension that we've now got? You can see there, I'll get you know on my hand, it really does lift, and that's what I've just basically done. And you can do it with any of the foam, you can even do it with the thicker five mil foam, but just kind of let it you know catch and you'll see it lift. And if it doesn't really do anything, don't be afraid to turn it up a bit, but it just may take very quickly, and then you just want to let it come off. And it will kind of go a bit limp, but just as it's kind of setting, I just like to shape the, the inside there so that just stretches a little bit. But again, that's now ready to go and it's, it's, you can feel it, it almost sounds a little bit crispy. So it's, like I said, it's, it's perfect now for, you know, starting to create nice flowers with. So I'm just going to finish those three pieces that I've got there and, um, and then I'll layer them up and show you kind of the order I stick them down. turn my iron off. Also I should add that there is a craft iron that you can get and I think it's by Sticks2. So um, I'll share the links to it because I'm actually quite tempted to get it myself. Although I don't make tons of these it is nice to have there and I'm sure there are other things that you can do with it as well. So now I'm going to keep my foam pad here because it's just handy to keep but you just basically want to start with the largest one first and then work your way down so that's the next largest and so on. So I've just got my hot glue gun on I'm just going to pop a little bead of glue there and you just want to kind of work opposites really so I'm going to sit that one in there so they all kind of you know like overlap each other and then I'm going to go for one of these ones and just build it up each time trying to make sure they kind of you know you can see a bit of every leaf or every petal and then I'll do another three leaf three petal one get me words out today. Let's have that one like that and then I'm just pushing it down because again that will just create more dimension and then that one and let's pop that one in there and then the last one. So I've got five, no, yeah, no, five now. I won't, well, I may use all five, but I don't think I will. And then I have that one. Let's have that one in there like so. And just really push that down. Like I said, we're going to add the stamen to 
keto in a moment and that will really bring them together. A little bit of hot glue on there but now if I bring that up, you see how cool is that? They're so so pretty. I've got two left over there as well. Maybe I can just, I'm going to pop that in here because I can actually, I might put it, this one actually I'm going to put underneath because it feels like it's missing a, like something there. So let's do like so. And then, is there another one there? Looks like, yeah, that one looks a little bit, that one looks a little bit odd. Let's just let that one set. Okay, so unfortunately I forgot to push record, but basically with these here, you had all the different sizes. You start with the largest first, a little bit of hot glue, stick it on top, and then the next size again, stick on top. There's three different sizes. And then I just used my bone tool, put a little bit of glue on the back and just pushed it inside the flower there. Just the same way as you, you made the flower and you'll see you get all your little stamens there. And there's room to pop a little gemstone or something in the center, so we, I'll do that. But that's just a kind of a quick way and a cheap way, if you use your iron, to shape them. But you can stretch them, you can add other colors and things like that. But there's also, let me show you the other colors that I have. So I've got the greens there, which I'm going to use to die cut the ivy here. I'm going to use this colour because I think it goes quite nice with the paper. And then I'm just going to pop it on my side of my iron just to give it a little bit of shape. Then you've got, this is Flower Foam. I don't know what brand that is. This company here. This was from a charity shop. And there's a nice selection of colours. Then this is Fleurs. Again, this was from Charity Shop 50p, but um, they do a huge range and it's always on Create and Craft. This is Periwinkle, so some nice colours. Um, and then I've got the white, but white's a really good one because you can obviously change the colours yourself. So I'm going to get the leaves done. I'll put that on high speed, but it's just exactly the same process. And then I'm just going to start arranging them, get a nice stamped image with mum on and finish off the topper. Okay, so what I've done is I've die cut a four and a quarter diameter circle. I've done it twice and just stuck them on top of each other and then just stuck it to one half of your lid. Make sure it's the half that will overlap so this one sits on top of this one slightly. Okay, and then I'm just starting to play around with these. So I've, I'm using my hot glue, obviously remove the chocolates and just start placing everything down. So just a little bit of glue and then just kind of feed them under that one. So I want that one to be on the top, the one in the middle. And then I can feed in the rest of like the green ivy, you know, around it. And you just want to kind of cover up the circle, I guess. It's entirely up to you. I mean, you might, if any of it's shown, you might want to use more of a decorative paper or something, or maybe like a silver or the holographic. That would look really nice as well. But I'm just kind of sitting them down there. going to have probably gonna have my sentiment or something there so I'll keep that free and then just add kind of glue I mean there's no there's no kind of right or wrong just kind of you know cover the area really Okay, so I've finished it and I absolutely love it. I think it has come together and it looks absolutely beautiful. So I've done the Happy Mother's Day. I'll talk you through what I've um, used. And I've put it on a little wooden stick. So it's like a little planter, you know, kind of um, sign like I did on the bouquet envelope box card. It's just a really nice way to just add another little element onto this. I've also added the butterfly. And I've added these little sprigs in silver, which I think work really well. And then I was thinking about what to put inside the centers of the flowers. And I've used this Nouveau drop, and this is the holiday cheer. But the purple and the greens are exactly the same as the purple and greens in the paper. So all I've gone and done is just literally get right into the flower and squeeze it in there until it starts to come out the top, although now that's typical isn't it, it's blocked, I never get them blocked, why has that done that? There we go, so you just pop it in there 
and just let it come up to the surface and it's self-leveling but once it dries because some of those are starting oh, starting to dry now and you can see just in the centre there and you get a real nice shine can you see it hit the light it's lovely so that's them that's the little sprig which is from the first of the paper craft society kits really like that one and then for the Happy Mother's Day, I've used the Apple Blossom Springtime Sentiments. This is quite new. I've not long had it. I've been using the Happy Easter already. You've got Hello Spring, Happy Mother's Day, which is just a really lovely font. And in that silver embossing powder, I think it looks beautiful. And you've got Happy Birthday, Get Well Soon, things like that. And then the butterfly I've just taken from the Butterfly Band by Bright Rosa. And I've used that one there as the in vellum on the very back there and then I've die cut two, one in the same pink which was a bit of scrap from the, the actual box and then in white so I just thought the white really pops against the green and everything and that's in the detail there and then finished it all off with my sparkle pen this is the Spectrum Noir and just brush it over everything it goes on darker but then it dries completely clear and I think it looks absolutely beautiful so yeah what a way to really make a box of chocolates really really special because I think they're just gonna wow I would love to receive this and you just change that for happy birthday change it for get well soon congratulations you know it will work for quite a few occasions and change all your colors and make it look a bit more masculine and you've got a really nice you know idea there for father's day and uh anything really Merry Christmas, you know, you can put use all poncetta fla poncetia flowers all over this. It's, I love it. So I hope you've enjoyed this last tutorial for this year's Mother's Day series. This is project number six. Um, I've really loved the ones that I've brought this year. If you would like to see from previous Mother's Day series that I've done, the whole playlist is up here. And I think there's about 30 projects on there, all kind of, you know, themed for Mother's Day but again you can easily change up the papers and the sentiments and stuff but uh, there's lots of inspiration there so go and check it out. If you've enjoyed today's tutorial please give me a thumbs up and if you like what you've seen maybe consider subscribing so you get to see more fun projects that I share. So thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye!